It seems like only yesterday we were putting the finishing touches on our custom built Privateer 141. As it turns out, that was February. It's been a long time. Since then, the hills have thawed out and we've been able to access some of the fantastic single track in our area and put the miles on this lovely frame, our custom build, in order to verify just how amazing these parts are, but also unpack what this 141 is all about on the trail. Hang tight as we dig in to just what we thought about this thing, some of its strengths and some of its weaknesses. Before we jump into our review, if you wanna learn how to win this bike for just 10 bucks and build new trails, stay tuned for a link at the end of this video. In case you missed our build video, we're gonna do a quick recap of the parts that we selected for our own build. To start off, we picked a Shimano drivetrain. We had an XT cassette with a Dior rear derailleur. We made it that to a Dior set of cranks and Shimano's Dior four pot brakes. One change that we made since we built up the bike is our Dior cranks came with a 30 tooth chain ring. We swapped that out for a 32 tooth to better suit the trails and where we live. For our cockpit, we used the FSA gradient handlebar and stem and the proven Marzocchi Z1 fork. 150 millimeters of travel is what the 141 calls for, so that's what we stuck with. In the rolling department, we picked the Hunt Trail Wide 30 wheels and we wrapped them up in some Versus Trail Rubber. For our touch points, we chose the Census Swayze slip-on grip. We went red just for a little bit of pop. We also chose Census's new Kevlar seat. To keep our bike shifting quickly and just like a little race car, we did go for the Shimano XT shifter. When it came to set up for our bike, we tried a couple of different things. To start with, we played with, our, with the stack on our headset. We started off with a little bit taller front end because we wanted to see if we could make the bike a little more playful and goofy. What we found is that it was more challenging to put the proper weight on the front wheel, especially on lower angle trails. So for my particular body type, I lowered it down just a bit. There's still some spacers under there. It's not slammed by any means, but we did play with a little bit higher and lower settings. For tire pressure, we kept with 27 PSI in the rear and 25 up front. We found that this combo performed extremely well when it came to maintaining rolling speed, as well as providing the traction that we need on this drier terrain in the Boise area. Our rear shock to achieve 30% sag, I put 170 PSI in there. The compression on our Vox DPX2 was eight clicks from fully closed. For our Marzocchi, I set it up with one token in there 70 PSI and a perform like a butte. So in the geometry department, the 141 is not what you'd call a small bike. Well, not small by the standards of a typical 141 millimeter 29er. Our head angle was 64 and a half degrees, a touch on the slack side for bikes in this area. Our chain stays came in at 440 millimeters, which again, for our size medium, is kind of on the longish when the trend tends to be in the 430 to 435 range. And the reach that got even bigger. It's 465 millimeters. So while the Privateer is definitely a longish bike for 140 mil 29er, the 78.7 degree seat tube angle kept things in check when it was time to climb. Speaking of that seat angle and going uphills, I dubbed the Privateer 141 the Escalator. This thing just goes uphill like there's no tomorrow. You just sit back, you turn your cranks, and chug, 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 up you go. There's a climb in the area that I've never been able to clean on any bike, ever. My first go at it with the Privateer, I went straight up that thing. I was absolutely stunned with how this thing did. I took it out for really long days in the saddle. Long grinds, the sort of things where you're just kind of wondering, why am I doing this to myself? Just when you think you want to quit or when you really actually do want to quit, the Privateer won't let you. It just keeps tracking. The front end stays down, your weight is centered, and you just keep going uphill. All right, but enough about the uphill, because let's face it, you're not getting a bike like this because you're entering cross country races. You're getting a bike like this so you can get to the top of the hill because the entire point is to get down that mountain as fast as you can. And surprise, surprise, the 141 delivered again. When it comes to hauling the mail, that really long feel that we touched on earlier, that's where it comes in handy. The faster you go, the better this bike feels. Super high speeds, really steep, wide open terrain. The 141 was absolutely unflappable. 
Putting the 141 into corners requires the rider to move about the spacious cabin. On lower angle trails, whether the corners were more open or tighter, you had to be really mindful to press your weight into the front end, lest you push through the corner. When things got really hairy, we were even able to get into the back seat and make the 141 dance around a little bit. Putting the 141 into more technical bits, especially rock gardens, chunder, really rowdy terrain, brought it to life. Again, for a 140 mil travel 29er, we know that's not super tiny, but it's also not one of the biggest bikes that we've ever tested. This thing holds its own against pretty much any bike out there. What would we add this up to? Well, for one, the four bar horse link suspension delivers a really nice feel. At 30% sag, the bike tracked extremely well, and while we found bottom when it mattered, we weren't consistently slamming through the bottom, which meant that we had more suspension to go when things got really nasty. The Hunt Trail Wide 30 wheels gave a nice profile and a good feel to the bike. A 2.4 inch tire, like our Versus, is just enough meat so you can track through the nasty stuff, but it's not so overly big as to create a vague feeling within the bike. Our Marzocchi Z1 proved to once again be a top performer. 36 mil stanchions, 150 mils of travel, nice mid-stroke support, and a smooth buttery feel on trail. All of this stuff worked in concert to deliver a bike that we felt was as well-rounded as anything we've ever ridden in this category. Something that I was really pleased with with the Privateer 141 was how quiet it was on trail. Sometimes with an alloy bike, you might be more prone to rattles or strange noises along the way, but not our 141. The cable management system that Privateer has incorporated, along with just enough rubber protection and Shimano's super quiet drivetrain, the only thing we ever heard on trail was the angry buzz of that Hunt rear hub and the gnashing of our tires across the dirt. Okay, so it's not all sunshine and rainbows with the 141. We're not calling this the perfect bike. It does have some weaknesses. For a little lunch loop that I have out my door, it's a nice mellow trail that takes you up to the bike park where there's lots of flow lines and jumps and good times like that. The thing is, it wasn't such a great time on the 141. Taking this thing out to some of the smaller jumps or some of the more flow lines, it felt like I was trying to jump a minivan through some of these jumps. The really long wheelbase and the aggressive geometry mean that this is a bike that's suited for the mountains. It's a mountain bike. This isn't your do-all jib around bike. This is a bike that you need to take into the hills and put it through the paces. That's where it's happiest. If your idea of a good time is kind of some flat rolly terrain and going to the park and goofing off, the 141 isn't gonna suit you very well. But if what you wanna do is go out and tackle big terrain, you wanna go on longer rides and you wanna use natural trail features to get this bike aloft and airborne, if you have big jumps to set it up for, then it's definitely going to provide for you. When we originally built up this bike, we had pit it to our vital audience. What kind of parts would they have done differently? We heard your feedback and after a little bit of time on the bike, there's some things that we definitely agree with. In order to save some money and not really cost us too many grams, we would have gone with an SLX cassette as opposed to the XT. We just don't know if the performance, weight, and money ratio is right there. The other thing we probably would have done is gone with SLX cranks as opposed to Dior, or possibly a different brand that was a little bit lighter, yet somehow still in that cost savings area. We made the decision to go with the more expensive Icetech XT rotors for our bike. Part of why we did this was because we wanted the option of being able to run either metallic or organic pads. We really liked the feel of metallic pads and didn't want to be limited by the rotors. So what's the bottom line? Well, the Privateer 141 is everything that we were promised and maybe even a little bit more. If you were looking for the execution of the modern aggressive trail bike, look no further, here it is. If your idea of a good time is long days in the saddle and you're ready to blitz trails and never back off, the 141 has your back. When you factor in the price of the frame and Privateer's extremely aggressive complete builds, you can't go wrong. If you want more content like this, make sure you like and subscribe. If you want more details and the full in-depth review on this bike, including all of the technical bits, how we set it up and where we rode it, head over to vitalmtb.com. And until next time, go ride your bike. <laughs>